Jeffrey has been making beats for almost a year now. He learned everything from watching YouTube videos and buying courses. He developed his own style, which is a good thing. Jeffrey has been doing things his way and when other producers give him advice, he just throws it away. I can tell you that Jeffrey's beats suck. They all sound the same and he doesn't want to fix his mistakes. Just because you've been doing something a certain way for years doesn't mean you were doing it right. Don't be Jeffrey. Behold, five mistakes you need to fix right now if you want to sharpen your skills as a beat maker. The first mistake is an easy one. Tune your 808s. Otherwise, your beat will sound like this. To fix that, you need to first find out the key of your 808. When you download one from the internet, you can find it in the name of the sample. If it's not there, right click the sample in the browser and click edit in audio editor. Here you can see the sound wave. Right click it and select regions. Now click on detect pitch regions. Then the key of the 808 will appear here. As you can see, the 808 is a D note. Okay, that's cool, but we're not done yet. Go to the channel rack and open up the sample properties. Head over to the instrument settings and right click on the D note. And now your 808 is tuned, which brings us to the next trick. Using too much compression when you actually want to keep it subtle. Listen to this drum loop for example. This one has way too much compression on it. This removes the dynamics of the melody and it will also sound really flat. And to fix that, we're gonna route all the drum samples to a bus. Add a super aggressive compression to the mixer track and then turn the mix knob down to zero. Turn it back up and listen carefully until you hit the sweet spot. The next mistake a lot of producers make is using effects for mixing purposes only. For example, an equalizer. You can do so much more with an EQ than just fixing the sound. For example, make a low pass band like this on your drum bus. Then right click the position knob and choose create automation clip. At the last part of your verse, gradually make the equalizer cut away more and more of the high frequencies. This sounds very subtle, but when the chorus drops, you want to bring all the highs back at once. This will result in a super hard knocking chorus. This is called creative mixing and you can do that with a lot of effects. The next trick, sidechaining your reverb. If you're not doing this already, write down every step because this is an absolute pro trick. So you have a simple piano melody routed to a mixer track. Rename another mixer track to Melody Bus and send the piano to that bus only. Then create another bus and add a reverb effect on it. Send the piano melody to the reverb bus and with this knob you can choose how much reverb you have. Next, add the fruity balance effect to the reverb bus and the P controller to the melody bus. Right click the volume knob and choose link to controller. For the internal controller, select peak control peak. Then invert the mapping formula. Click accept and head over to the P controller. Increase the bass a little bit and then turn up the peak amount. Play around with these controls until you have a balance between the reverb and the clearance of the melody. That sounds awesome. Now to the next trick. We've all been slapping the fruity soft clipper to our master because you know it just works. Now if you want to have more control of your master, stop using the soft clipper. Find the fruity limiter and turn up the ceiling. Then turn down the saturation. Now this does the same thing as the soft clipper. The difference is you have much more control because of these knobs here. Let's reset the ceiling and the saturation and head over to the envelope. Set the curves both to one and turn down the controls. This removes the filter that the fruity limiter has. Now you can tweak the envelope to your liking and then bring down the ceiling to whatever dB you want for your production. Then play with the saturation. You can compare this knob with the threshold of the soft clipper, by the way. Now, these five fixes will definitely make your beats sound better, but we're not finished yet. Next, I'm gonna teach you 10 tricks that you actually need to step up your game as a beat maker. So definitely go check that out right here on this video. But it's time for me to go. Goodbye.